Every stable thing has a base that keeps it that way. If we remove this base, the whole thing it supports won't be steady. That is exactly what a launch pad does to a spaceship. If it is negatively affected in any way, the spaceship will ultimately bear the consequences during launch. Today, we will be talking about the constant problem with the SpaceX launch pad during the static fire test. You must be wondering, what problem does the launch pad have? And how does this problem affect the SpaceX spacecraft? That is not all. How does this static fire test bring about this problem? Well, stick around till the end as we answer this question and more as we delve into the intricacies surrounding the SpaceX launch pad. Without further ado, let us begin. I am sure by now you all know about SpaceX's rocket testing facilities in Boca Chica, Texas. They have a big facility there and most of their manufacturing and testing occurs there. But by far the most impressive thing about the facility has to be the fact that it hosts the production of the Starship, which is one of the most awaited spacecraft out there. Besides being the largest spacecraft ever, it is also one of the most technologically advanced and powerful spacecraft out there. This is mostly thanks to the 33 Raptor engines it comes with, which result in an unreal amount of thrust, which in theory could take the rocket all the way to Mars. Besides the engine, its size, its aerodynamics, and the material used all play a part in the success of the spaceship. But wait folks, with a rocket with that much potential and power, there are bound to be repercussions. First of all, the material used is steel, which is heavier in weight than carbon fiber. Now, ideally, they would use carbon fiber, but that is too expensive, so SpaceX had to opt for steel. I understand that steel is way cheaper, but it is much heavier, which results in more thrust required to help leave Earth's gravity. So, how did SpaceX counter this excessive weight? Well, they used the world's strongest engine, the Raptor 2.0, 33 of them to be exact. But that is where the problem starts. As you all know, the Raptor engine is extremely strong. It has the capability to burst out extreme amounts of fire and energy, which helps raise the super heavy booster from the launching pad. But in doing so, there is a big risk that the extreme amount of fire and heat could damage the Booster 7 in any way. Because it is carrying fuel, if anything happened to the booster, it could result in a big explosion, which could really result in millions of dollars worth of equipment being destroyed. A similar thing has happened recently. It all started during a cold flow test, involving most or all of its 33 Raptor engines, mistakenly ignited a cloud of flammable gas, which started the event on the 11th of December at around 4.20 p.m. CDT. If you're confused about what a cold flow test is, it basically occurs when three distinct flow regulating orifice plate configurations upstream of the head and injector are used for the cold flow tests. As you can see, it is quite useful, but it can cause quite an issue sometimes, as you'll see soon. Well, when the gas was ignited, the resulting well-mixed cloud of methane and oxygen gas behaved like a miniature fuel air bomb, swiftly combusting to create a tremendous explosion and shockwave. This was felt throughout the facility. The fire extended after the original explosion to consume as much of the resultant gas as it could, creating a fireball that temporarily reached a height of 80 to 90 meters. The entire facility was lit up when this happened, and you could feel the impact of the explosion from miles away. While there were no casualties, the explosion caused some type of damage to Booster 7, which of course would need repairs now. But by far the most expensive damages had to be the Raptor engines, which had to be replaced as they got extensively damaged in the explosion. If you don't know, the Mechazilla are the arms that are used to catch the rocket when it lands. Due to the explosion, these got damaged, and we cannot afford that as they are important for landing purposes. Now, let us talk about the static fire tests. Before launching, launch vehicles go through system testing. Before launch, a fully built launch vehicle and its associated ground support equipment undergo wet dress rehearsal 
and a more thorough static fire test. These tests basically determine that everything is working perfectly when a rocket is launching. And we have seen, through the explosion that occurred on the 11th of December, that the static fire tests are causing damage to the launching pad. Now, what can SpaceX and Elon Musk do to rectify the problem? Well, SpaceX has started to put in measures to control these issues. First of all, heat shields have been put in place to counter the heat and fire so it will not reach the fuel chamber of Booster 7. That's not all. As the launch pad of the Super Heavy Booster has also been reinforced, in order to cater to the fire and heat released by the Raptor engines. Speaking of which, the Raptor engines have also been adjusted so that they have a perfect power to thrust ratio, as too much power can lead to destruction and too little power would be undesirable for the aims and goals of SpaceX. Besides the landing pad, the Mechazilla has also been reinforced so that it can handle the heat energy being released. This will be key when it has to land back according to SpaceX's plans. In the end, I think it is crucial for SpaceX to find a way for the Starship and its Super Heavy booster to work so that they can launch the spacecraft as soon as possible. The Starship is the future of space travel. If we perfect it, we will open a lot of doors in terms of space exploration. As of right now, it is planned that the Starship will be launched in the early part of 2023, if everything goes to plan. Let's just hope that issues such as fires and explosions do not harm the launch pad and surrounding equipment and cause any more delays so that we can launch as planned. Fingers crossed. And that's it for the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications. Let us know what you think down in the comments below and we will see you in the next one.